Have you ever wondered what is going on inside your body? Are you curious about what happens to the food you eat, the air you breathe, and the blood that flows in your blood vessels? Have you ever thought about what makes your body move and do different physical activities? This lesson will give you a tour of what is inside your body. You will explore the systems that help you breathe air, move your body, digest your food, and transport nutrients in your organs. You will get to know the different organs in each system up close so that you will understand how they work together to perform their functions. In this lesson, you will identify the different human body systems and explain how the following body systems work, muscular, skeletal, digestive, circulatory, and respiratory. The human body is made up of cells, tissues, organs, and organ systems. The human body is composed of billions of individual units known as cells. Tissues are formed from a group of cells performing a specific function. Muscles, connective tissues, and epithelial tissues are examples of tissues found in your body. On the other hand, organs, such as the stomach, lungs, and heart, are formed when multiple tissues come together to fulfill a specific task. Additionally, a group of organs with shared functions forms an organ system. Your body has various organ systems, each with distinct functions that contribute to your overall health and vitality. Kids, put your hand on your head. Touch your knees. Bend your fingers. What do you feel? The hard structures that you feel around your entire body are your bones, which are all part of your skeletal system. Now, let's talk about the skeletal system. The skeletal system is the framework of bones and cartilage that supports and protects the body's organs, provides structure, and facilitates movement. It consists of around 206 bones in adults although the exact number can vary slightly from person to person due to differences like the fusion of certain bones during development. The skeletal system is made up of bones, tendons, ligaments, and cartilage. Bones, these are the hard, rigid structures that form the framework of the body. Bones come in various shapes and sizes and are made of dense connective tissue filled with minerals like calcium and phosphorus which give them strength and durability. Tendons are tough bands of connective tissue that attach muscles to bones. When muscles contract, they pull on the tendons, which in turn pull on the bones, causing movement. Cartilage is a tough, flexible tissue that covers the ends of bones and helps cushion joints, reducing friction and allowing for smooth movement. It's also found in other parts of the body, such as the nose and ears. Joints are the places where two or more bones meet. They allow for movement and flexibility in the body. There are different types of joints, including hinge joints like the knee and elbow, ball and socket joints like the hip and shoulder, and pivot joints like the neck. Ligaments are strong bands of connective tissue that connect bones to other bones at joints. They help stabilize joints and prevent excessive movement or dislocation. Bone marrow is a soft, spongy tissue found inside certain bones. It's responsible for producing blood cells, including red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets, which are essential for carrying oxygen fighting infections, and clotting blood. Functions of the skeletal system, first is to support, it provides structural support for the body, maintaining posture and enabling upright movement. Second is for protection, it protects internal organs from injury. For example, the skull protects the brain, and the rib cage shields the heart and lungs. Third is for movement, it works with muscles and joints to facilitate movement. Muscles contract and pull on bones, producing motion. Fourth is for mineral storage. It stores minerals such as calcium and phosphorus, 
which are essential for bone strength and various metabolic processes. And lastly, is for blood cell production, bone marrow produces red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets, vital for oxygen transport, immune function, and clotting. Let us do activity number one. Kids, let's try this, move five steps forward. Jump five times. Then, return to your original position. Good job kids, did you know that your ability to move is powered by your muscles, collectively known as the muscular system? The muscular system is one of the most important systems in your body. It is made up of over 600 muscles that help you move, breathe, pump blood, and even digest food. These muscles work with your bones to allow movement and support. Without the muscular system, simple actions like walking, talking, or even blinking would be impossible. There are three main types of muscles, the skeletal muscles, smooth muscles, and cardiac muscles. Skeletal muscles are muscles that are connected to the bones. They move voluntarily, which means that the mind, or consciousness, controls and commands their movements. These are the ones that flex when you lift something heavy or run in physical education. Skeletal muscles work in pairs when one contracts, the other relaxes to help your body move smoothly. While, smooth muscles are found in places like your stomach, intestines, and blood vessels. These muscles are involuntary, meaning you don't have to think about using them. They work automatically to move food through your digestive system and help control blood pressure by tightening or relaxing blood vessels. The third type of muscles is cardiac muscle. It is a special type of muscle found only in your heart, IT is also involuntary, and it never gets tired. This muscle contracts and relaxes continuously, pumping blood throughout your body 24-7. Without the cardiac muscle, your heart wouldn't be able to beat. Let's discuss how muscles work. Muscles move through contraction, it is the process in which muscles become tighter and relaxation, it is the loosening of muscle fibers after contraction. They contribute to the body's shape and mass, offering essential support to the skeletal system, aside from making movement easier. Let's do activity number two. Now, we will learn about the digestive system, the part of our body that breaks down the food we eat and turns it into energy and nutrients. Kids, let's do an activity. Step 1, put a regular cracker in your mouth and chew it. Step 2, put a new cracker in your mouth and let it stay there for 2 minutes without chewing. What do you think happens to the food you eat? Every food you eat undergoes the process of digestion. In this process, the food is broken down into its simplest form to be used for energy production, tissue growth, and repair. The digestive system in the human body processes food and liquids. It consists of the digestive tract, where food passes through structures like the mouth, esophagus, stomach, small intestine, large intestine, and accessory organs. These organs work together to break down food into smaller components for absorption and assimilation.
For the food that we eat to be fully digested, it must travel through specific organs and be processed by the digestive system. This system consists of the mouth, pharynx, esophagus, stomach, small intestine, large intestine, rectum, and anus, and some accessory organs, such as the liver, gallbladder, and pancreas. These digestive organs work together to complete the process of breaking down food into nutrients that can be used by the whole body. Let's do activity number three. The Human Respiratory System Kids, try to inhale through your nose, then exhale slowly through your mouth. Can you feel the air flowing in and out of your body? The respiratory system consists of a set of organs and tissues involved in the uptake of oxygen from the atmosphere and the release of carbon dioxide generated during aerobic respiration. This gas exchange is also called breathing, or external respiration. It plays a crucial role in maintaining our body's oxygen supply and removing waste gases. Alright class, let's walk through this flowchart together and understand how oxygen travels in our body. Step 1. Air enters the body. When you breathe in, air comes through your nose or mouth. From there, it passes through the pharynx, your throat, and larynx, your voice box. Then, the trachea, or windpipe, carries that air downward into your chest. Step 2. The airways branch out. The trachea splits into bronchi, which are like two big tunnels going into each lung. These bronchi divide into smaller tubes called bronchioles. At the end of these bronchioles are tiny air sacs called alveoli. Step 3. Gas exchange happens. Inside the alveoli, something amazing occurs. Oxygen from the air you breathed in moves into your bloodstream, so it can travel all over your body. At the same time, carbon dioxide, the waste gas your body doesn't need, moves from your blood into the alveoli. This is where the exchange happens. Step 4. Breathing out. Finally, your diaphragm, the big muscle under your lungs, relaxes, which pushes the air back out. The carbon dioxide exits through the bronchi, trachea, larynx, and finally out of your nose or mouth, so in short, you breathe in oxygen, your body uses it, and you breathe out carbon dioxide. That's the cycle of life happening every second. Let's do activity number four. The circulatory system. As you have learned, the respiratory system takes in oxygen. The digestive system breaks down food into its simplest form so that the body can use it for energy production, tissue growth, and repair. These substances are important to keep your organs healthy and functioning. How do you think the nutrients and oxygen are delivered to the different parts of your body? It is done through the circulatory system. The circulatory system facilitates the transport of nutrients, oxygen, waste products, and other important materials. The interaction of the heart, blood, and blood vessels makes this function possible. Aside from this function, the circulatory system also helps in the regulation of body temperature the body's defense against diseases, and wound clotting and wound healing.
Let's do activity number 5. Here is the summary of the five major body systems of humans. Identify the body system described in each statement. Write your answers in your notebook. Study the illustrations of the different body systems below. Create a table in your notebook like the one below. Based on your observations, write down the function of each system in the second column and identify the organs involved in the third column. In the fourth column, give an example of a situation or activity in which each body system is at work. Answer the guide questions.